Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. What would happen if the world's internet was severed? We're going to talk about it today in the Freedom Zone. And how about this right here? Binance removed from App Store. Oh, I've got something we got to talk about here. And how about the entire U.S. budget on a blockchain? And how about three reasons Ripple won't be paying that $2 billion fine the SEC wants so bad? How about somebody roll that beautiful intro? Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.56 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 0.3%. 66300 plus for Bitcoin. 3100 plus for Ethereum. $110 billion market cap plus for Tether right now. $0.54 cents at the number 7 spot. Up one on the market cap spot to uh, number 7 for XRP. $0.54. Cents. We're up 11.6 on the 7-day. Doesn't that feel good? 2.3 of that in the last 24 hours. So maybe things are starting to turn like the technical analysts have told us to watch out for. I like seeing this 55 cents. It makes me feel a lot better today. So I hope it makes you guys feel better too, ranging between 53 and 57 cents. It feels like XRP is out for a run this morning. I hope it keeps on going. Little engine that could. I want to start right here and cover this for everybody. Um, as expected, Ripple references the Govil case. To simplify, it was determined that the appellate court in the Govil case that no proof of harm was presented, then disgorgement isn't appropriate. So that's what we're looking at here. Shout out to Sherry Empress 21 for this one. Uh, this is a reminder that when Stuart Alterati and Ripple filed their response to the SEC remedies phase, they pointed out this case that, hey, if none of our institutional clients were harmed, because we made pre-allocated option contract deals and arrangements with them that they got it at a hugely discounted price, that they're not upside down from the price that they got it at to what the price is today. So how could you even consider some kind of a disgorgement action in that, in that knowing those facts, right? And then highlighting Govil case that brings that to light. Now let's turn because we have this, we have this, we're going to share this around. We have a lot of news that we can't let go of, even though the Ripple case and the filing and everything is important today. I need to set the tone for some things that are happening here. We saw this clip yesterday, but it's very short. Take a quick listen to this. Matter of fact, let me give you this part of it. Since January 11th, when it first came about, yes. have you ever seen this much inflow this quickly into IBIT is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. I fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. Now that's going to be important for the conversation here in a second. So I want you to remember that. Now understand that we know that there are Ethereum ETFs and we, people want those approved. And May, I believe, is when the first one comes around. The SEC's refusal to approve Ethereum ETF could trigger another lawsuit against the SEC. Wouldn't be surprising with the way Gary Gensler's been rolling. But again, we also know that there's some trouble in the Ethereum network as well. It did, in fact, have an unregistered ICO. It did, in fact, get a free pass from William Hinman's crooked ass and Jay Clayton and others in the SEC, suppressing the rest of the industry while providing favor and picking a winner. Remember when you hear Gary Gensler say, well, I want to stay tech neutral. I can't speak to any one particular asset or project, right? But yet, that's exactly what William Hinman did, allowing for a token assembly line to be launched off the network, giving confidence for all kinds of developers from around the world to go build on Ethereum, because that's the one that's got clarity, right? Well, come to find out it doesn't, right? And now we know the SEC is afraid to go back and address that issue because of the boondoggling and backdoor uh, handshakes and all of that that went on, I believe. Well, and the $15 million that William Hinman accepted while being told by the inspector general inside the SEC to not accept it. I could go on all day. But the reality here is now the SEC is choosing to go after Ethereum over it being 
proof of stake and that it graduated from proof of work to proof of stake, saying that if you're staking on the network, then you are in fact participating in a security offering, right? So that's the argument today. Now, regardless of whether we think that's right or not, I don't think Ethereum tokens are securities in and of themselves, but they absolutely did a security fundraise, that's for sure. <laughs> Nevertheless, all of that to say that this is a mess and now we're looking at the next round of rejections or approvals for the Ethereum spot ETFs. And I would spec speculate to say that that'll be a denial. And that's going to heat up that. Now, remember what is happening. Ripple is launching a stablecoin on the Ethereum network and the XRP ledger. So I think this will help if there ends up being a mass exodus off of that network. If things work out and everything ends up smoothing out over the next couple of years with this and the SEC, with the Ethereum network, then it's going to be a beautiful union and interoperability that's been brought to the join these networks together. So we'll see how it shakes out. But meanwhile, we're watching RFK Jr. says, I'm going to put the entire U.S. budget on a blockchain. Take a listen. <laughs> I tell you, I do love this guy's message and I love his brash approach and how he just takes it right on, shoulders squared up to the point, whether it's this or any other issue. Uh, I absolutely do like this guy and where he's going and how bold he is to bring it out there. And it would be great to have all of those things on a blockchain so we can all see the kind of nepotism that goes on, right? Crony capitalism and everything else that goes along with it. But here's where we want to get to. The Philippines SEC orders Apple and Google to remove Binance from their app stores. Uh oh. All right. Now, this is going to give me a platform to take apart what I want to take apart. So, you remember what I said in the beginning of this video? When I showed the clip of Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, talking about the Bitcoin spot ETF is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. I ask a question. Where did Bitcoin get all of its liquidity from until the ETF was approved? It got it from the retail market and it got it through directly through USD Tether. That is the on and off ramp. And in fact, for a long time, at least in the early days, and certainly I believe still now, but that's up for question, but certainly in the early days, USD Tether would print USD Tether, buy Bitcoin, and then after Bitcoin goes up, then print more USD Tether. It literally sounds like the definition of a Ponzi scheme, right? So <laughs> market manipulation at the very, whatever you want to call it. But the reason I'm bringing it up is we see Ethereum being targeted. We know that the entire crypto industry is being targeted. Ripple is working its way to legal clarity and coming out of this case. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be an appeal and it may ultimately go to the Supreme Court, which I believe it does. But I believe Ripple will have power and strength to move forward and increasingly bring adoption, whether it's directly or indirectly, to the United States and certainly all their clients, the 95% of their customer base outside of the U.S. as well. Now, while all of that is happening, USD Tether is now being targeted too. We just heard recently in the last week, week and a half, the U.S. Treasury target USD Tether over illicit transactions to help Russia avoid sanctions from SWIFT. Uh-huh. So where am I going with all of this? Is USD Tether the next thing to happen? And will it be collapsed? 
I know you can make a great argument that there's too many treasuries backing USD Tether, and it would be harmful to the U.S. Treasury to do so. But I offer this, not if they've got a place for all of that money to go to, like USDC and soon-to-be U.S. dollar stablecoin launched by Ripple. They could unwind that illicit operation and shove that market cap into USDC and Ripple's USD stablecoin on Ethereum and the XRP ledger. This is speculative, but it could happen. They could also just force Tether to come under prudential regulation and off we go. But the problem there is, is that USD Tether, to my knowledge, doesn't have KYC and AML and all the rest of it set up. So how can they turn it around? I don't know. But the point for me here is this. Now that Bitcoin is getting its primary liquidity, I believe, or it's certainly on its way to getting its main source of lifeline, blood of liquidity, from where? The spot ETFs. So could we be watching the stage be set Because what better way to get rid of 20,000 tokens that don't need to be in the space because they don't actually solve a problem? What would be the best way to get rid of those? Because all your small tokens, the only way into most of them is on off ramp from USD Tether. So if they wanted Bitcoin to live, they approved the spot Bitcoin ETFs. They begin bringing the liquidity from the retail investors outside of the crypto space, shoring up the liquidity draw to back Bitcoin in a legitimate fashion. Ripple plans to launch a stablecoin on the Ethereum network and the XRP ledger, providing interoperability and liquidity and utility for this space broadly. And we certainly know about the market infrastructure they've built inside the financial system. But if the U.S. Treasury comes out and deals a blow to USD Tether, it could wipe out 20 plus thousand tokens that the only way in and out of them is USD Tether. And wouldn't that be the quickest way to clean this market up from all of the bad actors out here? Minus the SEC. That's my thought for today. That's my thought for today. Now, before we get out of here, I do want to go through this very quickly here and highlight. If you haven't seen my first video this morning on the SEC uh, versus Ripple update and the Ripple filing, it is straight fire. Go watch that first video. I'm going to highlight very quickly here some talking points and the three things and reasons why Ripple, major arguments why Ripple will not be paying the $2 billion fine. First is Ripple argued that regulatory agency did not demonstrate any justification regarding whether an injunction was necessary. Leading the crypto payments company asserted that the SEC failed to establish reasonable possibly possibility for future violations in the institutional related sales of XRP. The second argument is, is Ripple emphasized that the SEC has not also demonstrated the need for disgorgement in the case. And as expected, Ripple cited the Second Circuit Court ruling in the Govel case, as we highlighted today, showing that if our clients and customers haven't lost any money, you can't award any penalty for harm. Lastly, it argues that any civil penalty should be most at most $10 million instead of the whopping $876 million the SEC is currently seeking. Notably, Ripple argued that the relevant facts of the case support a lower civil penalty rather than the high demand the SEC has made. And that is where we are on this day. And I want to remind everybody that while we wait for the final responses to come in, we know that the uh, the remedies related opposition brief will be filed on May 16th and afterwards the court would issue its final judgment. It has been typically said and observed that Judge Torres usually takes around two months. So that would put us June, July, probably late July, early, mid August before we would get a ruling on the remedies phase. So that's where we are on this day. Now, very quickly, before we get out of here, I want to take you through some charts. And it starts right here. Egg Red Crypto says the XRP color code to $1.40. As you can see, 
And I just want to show you here, you can see the Fibonacci levels and what we're looking at, right? Blue is the supply zone. We're not up there yet. We're still down here, right? We're still down here in this 54, 55 cent range, but we're up out of that double bottom area. So we could be making that turnaround coming out of the hole here. We don't yet know, but it's looking super promising. Then I want to show you this from Block Bull. It says, if we can reach the top of the fibs of the XRP to Bitcoin pairs, the XRP would be valued at $75 a cycle. And you can see the XRP to BTC chart here and the way he's showing this breakout that's setting up. Whoa, my goodness. Boy, I'm reminded of Brian Knight from CNBC when he said, the longer the base, the higher in space. My goodness, would I love to see that play out, but we'll have to see what happens. He goes on to say, Block Bull does, says how I expect XRP to play out if we do a measured move of the recent range. He says basically right here, we could go up and tap a dollar six, then come back and retrace between 66 and 74 cents. And watch out, ladies and gentlemen, that's what he's saying there. He says, as soon as we cross 74 cents, XRP means business. He says, you hodl for $27 minimum and aim for $70 this cycle. Oh, my goodness. Well, I wouldn't kick that out of bed for eating crackers. Now let's take a look at Stellar's XLM. Three macro targets could put that at $180 and $10. Well, I love where this is going because you guys know that I am big on XRP, XLM, XDC, HBAR, Quant, and a couple others out here, and XDC as well. So this is all super exciting. And I tell you, you know, in history, we usually see Stellar usually follow behind XRP at about a third of the price. That doesn't mean that it's like tried and true. This is very general observation. But if that's at 10 bucks, XRP could be a 30, right? And that would put us around that $27 target we've heard so much about from the technical analysts. Super, super amazing. We're going into the Freedom Zone, but I want to remind you, we're nine days away from the largest XRP conference in the world, May 3rd, May 4th, 2024. It's XRP Las Vegas. I hope you will join us, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a remarkable event. I am getting so excited to bring this to all of you. And I want to remind each and every one of you, this is for you. This event is your event. You are the prize. You are the reason for this event. You, all of you that are hearing my voice, are the special feature. It's not the people on stage. It's you. The people on stage are for you. And that's what we've done. And I cannot wait to unveil it for everyone. Not financial advice of me or anyone else. I told you the world's internet cut off. We're going to talk about that right now in the Freedom Zone and how quickly it could be done. Oh, my goodness. This could scare the daylights out of you, but also it could also trigger a huge catalyst for Starlink and the thousands of satellites that are waiting to bring us the next internet of value. We're going into the Freedom Zone, not financial advice from me or anyone else. I'll catch all of you on the inside. Come on in. All right, welcome back. As promised.